Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us this week. I just wanted to jump on here and let you know that this week's episode of Think Tank Thursday is actually a replay of the AAMA Member Connect webinar series that they invited Beth to do, which was called Group Sales Post-COVID. This originally aired um, through AAMA on Tuesday, April 27th, and you can find the replay on their YouTube channel as well. But with their permission, I am replaying it as part of the Think Tank Thursday episode. So I hope you enjoy. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's AAMA Member Connect webinar, Group Sales Post-COVID. I'd like to introduce your moderator today, Pete Gustafson. Thanks, Tina. Hi, everybody. And uh, as Tina says, welcome to uh, group sales post COVID. I doubt I have to tell any of you that guest expectations are quite a bit different than they were pre pandemic. Today's conversation will focus on booking group events in this environment. Doing so requires a new set of standards, procedures and protocols that are well worth the requisite investment in time, treasure and training. Why? Well, because there's an entire country full of people who have the resources and are clamoring for socially fun experiences, but they need to be convinced they can do so safely. Today's conversation will be led by my friend, Beth Stanley. Beth is the CEO and founder of Trainertainment, a coaching and training company focused on helping leaders and their teams grow in sales, service, and leadership. The company's primary focus is on the entertainment industry. Trainertainment has provided insight and solutions for FECs, including Palisade Entertainment, Shenanigans, Spare with a Z, Bowling, Andy Alligators, Holiday Lanes, and hundreds of others in North America and abroad. You can find her in Replay Magazine, where she provides a monthly featured column called The Party Professor. Her book, People Buy from People, was just made available in an audio format and is currently available on Amazon. Beth has been invited to speak at many local, state, national, and international trade shows and educational events, including the upcoming Amusement Expo International, scheduled for June 29th through July the 1st. There, she'll lead a panel conversation on how to hire, train, and retain the best people, an immense challenge the entertainment and hospitality industries are facing right now. I've come to know Beth through Trainertainment's Peer Talk, a weekly Zoom meeting attended by FEC owner operators, industry suppliers, and consultants. She and her team started Peer Talk at the onset of COVID-19. It was a weekly opportunity to check in and find out how your peers were doing as this crisis unfolded and exchange ideas and best practices. It's a safe and receptive space where people can vent their frustrations, challenges, and fears with a group of individuals who get it. It's evolved into one of the few good things to come out of this pandemic and a highlight I look forward to every week. After her presentation, Beth will answer as many of your questions as we have time for. You can pose your questions by typing them into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. And you can start doing that now and throughout today's program. If we're unable to get to your question, we'll do our best to provide answers in the recap email. We'll be sending out to all of you following this webinar. Please note this webinar will be archived on AAMA's website, coin-op.org for future viewing. For those of you new to AAMA, I'd like to extend my personal invitation to you to join the association. We've waived membership fees for the 2021 membership year. So really all you need to do is visit coin-op.org where you'll find a membership application, fill it out, and send it in. Beth, now that I made you nervous with all that buildup, I'm going to pass the baton over to you to take this away. Man, I was having to fight back the tears, Pete. That kind of introduction. I I, I, I was like, just keep on talking. I, I got to get myself together. That I hope I can live up to that kind of introduction, Pete. Thank you so much. Um, well, bring it on, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm really excited to to be part of the um, connection, right? And I love the way that Pete said it, that we're going to have a conversation. Uh, the thing that if you don't, if you don't know me, uh, I don't know why we always have to put this slide in here. Pete did a, a fantastic job of 
of introducing me and I don't know that I can even live up to all that. <laughs> the more important thing is, is you and that you're here and that you said, you know what, I'm going to take a few minutes out of my day to day and I'm going to see if I can get fed just a little bit. And so my commitment and my promise to you is to probably remind you of some things that you know and to encourage you to take the next step now to begin to build group sales back. Uh, my friend Kevin always talks about springing back, and I think that that's really where, where we absolutely are. This is going to be a really simple presentation. Again, I think the conversation is the most important piece, and so I'm happy and uh available uh, during this time to answer any of your questions. So I want to tackle why we want to talk about group sales right now. I want to I want to share with you who we should be talking to. I'm really going to talk to you today about the low hanging fruit. Everything is still so topsy turvy. I am the eternal optimist. A year ago, I thought, mm, well, this will take about 10 weeks. Boy, was I wrong, right? But I think now we can, we can begin to step out of our, um, what would we call it? Our adjustment. We need to readjust now. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you about who, who we ought to be talking to. And then how, how do you get the very best results with a client. Pete, thank you for mentioning uh, the book, People Buy From People. There's also a workbook, a companion workbook that we released very recently. And this how is, you can take a deep dive in that book, workbook uh, combo. And um, we'll, I mean, I'm not here to, to sell you anything, but if you really like the overview of what you hear, it's really a way to dig in and, and make sure this learning sticks. I'm always, I'm always obsessed with that, about if people are going to spend the time to do learning, how in the world are you going to keep it? And so anything we can do to help this be sticky is important. It's interesting. So group sales, if you're on this call and you're a group sales individual, if you're the owner of a facility that right now is just trying to keep up and you're taking business as it comes in, there's a big difference between taking a reservation and becoming a sales rep and having a sales strategy and having a sales process. And one of the things that, that I like to say is the difference between a reservationist and a salesperson might be a six-figure income or simply an hourly wage. So that's the truth for your team member. And for you, if you're the owner, the, the truth for you is it could be the difference in four or 500,000 more dollars to the bottom line if you decided, hey, I'm really going to invest and participate in a group sales strategy. Pete has been listening to me on Peer Talk for over a year now, and I refuse to talk about a new normal. I continue to talk about a now normal because things may be different tomorrow than they are today or certainly next week or next month. And so I think what we have to get focused around is what's so today, what's so right now, and what am I willing to do to get to the next level? And so that's one of the reasons I think it's so important that we start talking about group sales right now. Not, that there is such a strong desire to return to normal. And I, I know that if we were together and I was asking to raise your hand or get some feedback, you would absolutely agree with me that, that we're looking for fun. We're looking together. I can hardly say I'm fully vaccinated and I've had COVID. And so if I see you, I'm going to hug you, right? I just am. Um, I think that there's cautious optimism in most parts of the United States. I think that there is pent up demand 
And I think that opportunity abounds. And that's what I want to talk to you about with the kinds of groups that would be the low hanging fruit to go after today. What I want you to go away from this presentation with today is something that could go book you a group event this afternoon or tomorrow. So, um, and maybe that's not even cautious optimism. Maybe that's, um, <laughs> maybe that's like overt optimism. I don't care. I'm going to stick with optimism. So who are the six groups that you could focus on? Get your, get your cameras ready because you may want to take a picture of this particular slide. Number one, the lowest hanging fruit is your past group events. Guys, I know many of you have been kind of keeping up with people, but I know a lot of you have just been kind of paralyzed and, you know, you're thinking nobody's going to go anywhere or I don't even think people are working anymore. We made some calls kind of mid pandemic to see what people might be thinking about, for instance, for holiday events last year and things like that. And, you know, we got feedback that said, hey, we're not even allowed to go back and work together. They sure won't let us go back and play together. That was so then. We don't know what is so now. So it's so easy, I think, to call your past group events and you definitely want to do that. I'll, I'll take each one of these and give you a little more uh, meat about how to, how to approach them. I just wanted to give you the six right now. Summer camps and daycare. If not for peer talk, we wouldn't be in the know about the fact that, that in some states, summer camps and daycare, those bookings are coming true. We, we talked to, uh, I believe, uh, somebody from Iowa who said they weren't going to be able to do them. They called them in February near a normal time that we call for summer camps and daycares. And they weren't because they would not put the kids on a bus. That's all changed. And so all those protocols are different now. And so even if you tried to do your normal talking to people in the February, March timeframe and got, you know, some discouraging information about summer camps and daycares, it won't hurt you to call and check in on them again. Hey, this is Beth. What's changed? If anything, la la la. Again, we'll talk more in a minute. Reunions, family and class reunions. I think the family reunion piece is a big deal. I can't, if I've heard one story, I've heard 15 about grandparents seeing their grandkids for the first time in a year. And so I do think family reunions are going to be a great big deal. And then also class reunions. And I'll talk to you again about how to go find some of those. Post-prom, I think this is probably your very biggest opportunity. For two years now, these kids that have graduated high school have not gotten their normal. And so many, so many family entertainment locations do as much group revenue between April and mid-June with post-prom, end of school. I should have put end of school and not just post-prom here. They've done so much with that group business during that time frame that it's exactly equal to the amount of holiday business that can be done. This is big. People are still in school right now. Um, you want to talk with school counselors and find out who who's your go to. But this is big, big business. And you need to listen. They don't have anywhere they've been going because they've not gone anywhere for two years. So this is your time. If this has never been big business for you, it can be big business. Christmas or some kind of holiday in July event. Um, you're going to want to host one of those. One of the reasons I. Um, um, fortunate enough to serve on the education committee with Pete and a host of brilliant industry professionals. And we were talking about this and I said, no, let's do this group one here in April, because if you're going to get your head wrapped around finding a sales rep, putting somebody to work, starting to make all that outbound activity, you need to do it now. You, you want to be thinking about this Christmas in July event and now, right now, it's 90 days away, if you can believe that. And then church groups. Church groups are already meeting together. They have been 
Um, and so they're not unhappy to go be in a group somewhere together. So if you want, get your little picture of these six groups to focus on. So you'll have kind of your cue card and you can begin to build your list. Can you imagine if you just did five calls in each of these areas, even a week, I was thinking a day and then I thought, oh, I'll scare somebody off. But honestly, if you had a full time person um, working on it, you could try five different contacts in each of these groups every day. Can you imagine the possibilities of the group impact that you would get to live through? So past group events, why are those so important? Well, they're easy, low hanging fruit. You've already built a relationship with them, right? You're already connected to them and you can approach them with a curiosity, with uh, almost in my book, People Buy From People, I talk about that if salespeople could develop a mindset that said they're a journalist or um, a profit detective, right? So that what you're doing is, is you're trying to understand how's it going for you? What's business look like? Have y'all had a sales kickoff meeting? What do you think you're going to be doing about getting together? I have this belief that um, I have this belief that business is not going to go back like normal. Many people have learned to navigate this at home work environment. I think companies are going to shrink. Some companies will shrink their real estate and save money by not paying for as big a spaces because people have gotten comfortable working at home. And in my mind, this is a, this is real big news for entertainment venues, especially if you've got meeting space. Because I would think that a business, I mean, listen, I run a virtual company and anytime we can put all of our people together in one place, it's a big deal. And you know what we do? We we go eat or we go axe throw or we go bowl and things like that. And I think companies are going to have to do those kinds of things because collaboration breaks down when you work in a, a virtual environment. It's not like somebody's going to stop by your desk and go, hey, Pete, what about la, 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 la. And so as business owners, they're going to have to find ways to keep morale up and to keep relationships built because I don't think everybody's going to be back at the office. So I think your value and your space is going to be cool. And I want you to think about with past group events and when you begin to make your reach and find out what they're doing and how they're feeling about getting together and celebrating life as normal. I don't want you to just think about booking them one time. I want you to think about booking them quarterly or monthly or weekly. Like that's what's possible. Would they book quarterly? Would they book weekly? Would they book annually? What kind of client are they going to be? And I think that that's something you ought to, I think you ought to put that in your qualification process and really begin to think about not just one-time events. And by the way, the fact that you're already connected to them is really big because connection is the foundation in the sales process that I'll show you at the very end. Summer camps and daycare. So many folks, um, many folks have big business, big group business in the summertime because you do have lots of camps. Uh, one of the things that we always talk to people about by this time of year in our sales coaching programs, many of those bookings are already done and the, and the child care facilities and the summer camps have already made after school care groups. They've, they've already made all their decisions about all summer long. I don't think that's true this year because of the ever changing policies. And when you can prove that you've got safe, clean, fun, then, then I think that you're going to be the facility of choice. In normal times, we would be telling you to go ahead and reach back out to the places that you had not gotten booked 
and remind them that you guys are a wonderful rainy day emergency plan and let them know how they could call you, right? Because sometimes they will have planned something in the park and it rains and, and the kids are going to be disappointed if they don't get to, to follow through with their outing. So um, again, I just want to make that point about things changing daily. I told my transportation story early and it doesn't match my slide now, but um, I was just shocked to hear that the bus was an issue and now it's not. And so please, please don't take what you hear today as the gospel because in the now normal remember it can be different tomorrow and will you be bugging people maybe you know but listen you got to grow your business just like everybody else and group sales let me tell you why group sales are so important many times it's the first time somebody's coming to your center it's their first introduction. They may not have even known who you were or what you were about. And so when they come with a group event, you've now just exponentially opened up your facility to all those people's families and all that additional walk-in business. So groups are, remember that, they're the first time so many people will have ever come to your business to begin with. And then finally, with the childcare people and the summer camps, one of the things I want you to think about is if you've leveraged hours during this pandemic, maybe you're opening later. Um, we've got people who are literally closed two or three days a week. I want you to think about that time being a wonderful time for groups, right? Because I know, I mean, one of our one of our dear Peer Talk uh, fans. Peter Murphy was talking about moms who were trying to get him to uh, guarantee that uh, they would be by themselves or that everybody in the facility would wear a mask and kind of the mask mandates are not as strict and things like that. And Peter was like, I can't guarantee that. But as we were kind of processing and working through it, could you guarantee it? If it was in an off hour, you know, if, if you open at 11 and you want to have your event at 10, we've probably got people there at 10 o'clock opening the building to begin with. And so I think that's the same thing that you could do here with the camp groups, too, especially if it was a big one that would take up your whole facility and things like that. Maybe leverage, maybe leverage your off hours so that that you're that's just what is that called? Gravy. That's just extra gravy business there. The reunion piece is really a great opportunity. I think it's a missed opportunity in the um, group environment, um, you know, because people are like, well, how do I find families who are um, trying to do reunions? Well, in my mind, I can find about everything on Facebook. You know, everybody's got a group. You could type in reunion groups on Facebook and tons of stuff will come back. You can type in uh, one of the biggest groups I'm involved in. It's so funny when we had our 30th class reunion. So that would have been in, well, not, let's see. I, don't, I can't even remember 2019. We had our 40 year class reunion. So in 2009, I was kind of a new Facebook person, but one of my biggest groups that I'm involved in is a group from high school where we, put that together and it was an easy way for us to talk with each other and I have in working with sales teams we've looked at local local high school groups in the community that you live in and been it's been easy to find who is kind of leading the charge on the on the class reunion and all it takes is uh, like you can message that person and say hi this is Beth and I'm with ABC Fun Center. I see that you're planning the uh, 2001 class reunion. I would love to help you with those plans. Tell me everything. What are, what are y'all doing so far? Right? Don't pitch your stuff. Find out what they're doing. Figure out how you could fit in there. I think one of the most underutilized um resources at your fingertips is your own staff 
your staff has a family. <laughs> your staff probably went to school and has some clue. Maybe their parents are having reunions. So I would talk to my staff really about all these groups, right? Do you have reach at comp at a company, a specific company? Do you all do you go to church? Do you belong to an organization where our center might be a great place for a group together? Uh, and then certainly you need to be reaching out to your local high schools. And look, you can double dip that local high school thing for reunions and um well, one of the other ones that I just had, and I, I lost my thought. Forgive me. If it comes back, I'll tell you. Um, oh, maybe it's because it's here. So post-prom events and, and also end of school, any end of school event. Write this down. You know who has parties? Kindergartners. Um, fifth graders in traditional uh you know, elementary school, in middle school, six, seven, eighth graders, and then 12th graders. You need to talk to every kindergartner, fifth grader, eighth grader, and senior high teacher. Those people are the most in the know about who's going to do what for end of school. And I'm not saying every grade doesn't have their own end of school party, but we know those milestones when they're moving up to the next grade are very, very important. And again, like I said in the introduction and talking about these groups, the amount of revenue that you could drive next, and I know next April to next June seems like a long way away, but won't, won't you be excited to have that money in the bank? right? That already have that business planned. And I think, I think it requires that you go to work on it now, if you're going to be the one out front to get it. And listen, right now, they may just tell you, you know, Sally May is going to handle uh, the senior class next year. But if you can get that contact and begin that conversation now, it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big uh, event for you long term. Because what we found is once people once you can do a great job and, and you're delivering a great event, then it makes it super easy for them to come back. So this is a new day that everything like the slate is clean. We've not been having group sales. And so you have this brand new opportunity to be whatever you want to be in the groups department. Right. Um, Christmas in July or holiday in the fall. I, I want you to know there are there are six, well, there's three Friday, Saturdays in December. So Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are Friday and Saturday. So we have six Friday, Saturdays in December. You do not give a discount, even at your Christmas in July event or holiday in the fall event. You're, you're not booking people and giving them a discount. You're decorating uh, an area of your center and you're going to serve, uh, if you want, cocktail. This is a free kind of mock event and you want to invite decision makers from companies and groups and organizations that can book their holiday event at your facility. And, you know, is July too early to do it? Nah, maybe. Uh, if you do holiday in the fall, I would absolutely not do it any later than August. And August is not a bad time either because kids are going back to school and you've got a little bit of, um, of downtime there. But, but make, it, make it very festive. Put them in the mindset. They're going to be excited about planning their holiday event. And you should not and you do not need to dumb it down and sell it for less. Everything is costing you more. You need to, you need to relook at your holiday packages and why not do it now? Please get ready. You, you have such an opportunity, I think, to make this the best year that you've ever had. So 
anyway, I feel like I'm preaching, but I want you to do it. And then finally, and I probably could have put this as the lowest hanging fruit because I do think uh, church groups are, they're already meeting indoors together and they are already comfortable with their bubble, right? Um, the youth, did you know that youth groups at most decent sized churches, I'm not even talking about mega churches, I'm talking about a church that might have a 50 person youth group, they will do something with those kids weekly. Well, when did they bring, you know, when did they bring them to your center to play mini golf or to skate or, or, or to bowl? When's the last time they brought their kids to you? And so talking to those youth pastors, finding out what they're doing, how they're doing, what's morale look like, and what are their summertime plans? And what would it take to get you in the, in the rotation? You're not asking them to come to you every week. You just want to get in that rotation. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I felt like that was one of the very best things I could do for you uh, today is who could I go talk to? So the thing that I want you to keep in mind when you're talking to them is that you have two ears <laughs> and one mouth for a reason. And so instead of just like, when you're going out and, and prospecting with these top six, I want you to I want you to really pay attention. And am I talking more than I'm listening? Because when you put the question out there about how are you doing, what have you been doing? How have y'all managed to get your group together, your team together, your youth together during this crazy time? What are your plans? I'm curious to know. What do you think your plans are going to be? for the future. I, I love this thought. So that kind of client centric focus takes the pressure off you. Um, it's always like what I think about if I'm being, it's much less stressful for me to be interested in you than to try to come up with something interesting to sell you, right? I already know that what I have, you need. And of course the buyer, thinks that's what you think, don't they? And so if you're just like pitching, 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 come have your group event, come have your group event here before you, well, let me show you the next slide, right? Because I'll give you the overview of how to, to use the sales process. So the P, pro, the prospect part are the top six that I gave you. Connection is literally finding some common ground and it's never been easier. We all have common ground right now. We've all been cooped up. We are all living through COVID, right? And so it's so easy to connect with people. Hi, how are you doing? How are you surviving COVID? What are you looking forward to? Kind of what's next, right? And then qualification. In qualification, what happens is, is it really can deepen the connection. And then you can find out what are some of the things that you all have done in the past, right? That gives you a, an idea of who you might be competing with or even how much they've spent in the past or how they make decisions, right? You want to find out or in qualification, you want to find out, am I talking to the decision maker, right? Obviously, you want to understand logistics. If you were going to get to go, do you think it's something you're going to do in the next six weeks or the next six months, right? The logistics. When you all go places, how many people do you normally take? That logistics piece, everybody kind of knows because it's the who, what, where, when of the event. Um, you want to understand what their tolerance for spend is, but I think budget is a dirty word. And if if I say, if it, I'll tell you, if somebody says to me, well, Beth, what's your budget? I want to punch them in the face and tell them it's none of their business, right? And so great ways to, like, instead of saying, what do you want to spend on an event like this? You might say, um, how, how do you decide when, when you're taking people places? How do you decide what to spend on an event like this? There's just something different about the way to ask that in qualification that's just different than saying, what's your budget? It seems less intrusive. 
And then, of course, you want to propose a great solution. Once you've had a really good conversation with them, understand you're talking to the decision maker, have some idea about when they want to come. Now you can talk about how wonderful it is that you have meeting space. You've got a team building program. You've got food and fun. You know, whatever it is that's appropriate based on what you heard during these first three steps, right? And then finally, you want to ask people. You want to say to them, it is my goal that you all have at least one event, four events, whatever you want to say at our facility this year. And I am committed to doing whatever it takes so that you all get to come have fun with us because shouldn't we have some fun in 21, right? So you, you, you do all this hard work, a lot of sales folks, and I would say reservationists are in this category, do a really good job right up until the time you need to ask for a deposit. And what you have to say to yourself is, if I didn't ask this person to do something, I didn't finish the process. And guys, listen, this is a real top level view of the sales process. Um, I can tell you shamelessly, there is a deep dive course on the Trainertainment website if you want to go, if you want to go deeper than that. So that's everything that I have for you today. And um, I'm open for questions, comments, Pete. I can, I, I know you probably got things swimming in your head. Um, and I want to, I want to help as much as we can here. So talk to me. Well, thanks, Beth. That was a great presentation. I, I uh, learned quite a few things. This old 41 year industry veteran uh, got a few things out of that. So thanks for. Good. For Good. Um, something you didn't touch on. And I think today with the, uh, specter of COVID out there and the unknown of what the future is. We certainly hope that it's going to go in the right direction, but you know, there's all these warnings that, you know, we're still okay. on refunds, right? So are you recommending well, folks get a, a deposit and then how do you, how do you manage that, that concern about, well, you know, if all of a sudden the CDC comes along and says, we got to shut it down, you know, yeah. how are you managing that conversation about refunds? Well, I, that is a great, that is a great question. Um, I think I would, I think that obviously you probably have a refund policy in place. Most, most people do. And I think that I would have to err on the side of generosity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If, if, if it is out of our control and, and that would be if, if you got, if you got shut down and I know there are certain parts of the country. It's crazy. I live in the wild west. If you guys couldn't tell, I live in the wild west of Texas. We have no idea there's a pandemic going on here. And, um, and so just like everything's really seems crazy. So I would err on the side of caution and generosity that yeah. if, if, if things outside your control shut you down or, or let's say somebody in the group gets COVID. Well, we don't want them in the center. Right. And you can, you know, you've got a couple of options. You could refund their money completely, or you could refund in form of a credit. And I think you just have to be mindful of the situation. If it is a week before and you've not bought food and you, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're not out anything, other than, gosh, I don't get this group. To me, if, it, if I'm the business owner, I'm probably giving their money back 100%. If it's within days, you know, maybe 48 to 72 hours, it may be that you've already made an investment in the food that was with the group and things like that. So you've got some real hard costs. So you you may decide to refund in terms of a, of a gift card. And you can even make that gift card more valuable than what the deposit was if you wanted. Yeah. So um, one of the things you talked about was premium pricing um, for special times of the year. And that's been a central theme of the peer talk conversations, pricing in general, you know, package pricing and so forth. Do you see an opportunity as we exit COVID to make those first parties have a premium price point? I think it's always easier to back up than to go up. 
People get so, and I don't know if you've noticed or not, Pete, but my gosh, like, I hate to admit, I don't need to eat Whataburger, but I do. And um, any drive through everything's a lot more expensive. Mm. And so I think you have to take a real deep look. I don't, I don't think you ought to knock people's heads off. I think there ought to be integrity in your pricing, but, but now is an excellent time to look at what are my real food costs? What are my real labor costs? And you need to get those in, you need to get those in check. And, and what that means is you probably need to raise your prices. Mm. So, and, and I don't think you can just raise them with groups. I mean, if your group events, listen, I, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a consumer, right? And if I can go into a facility and see that laser tag costs X, bowling costs Y, and pizzas cost Z, and I can do the math, and now you've charged me 40% more for a group to come in, I don't understand that. Right. And so you may need to raise your, if you're going to, if you look like your group pricing is premium price, you may have to raise your retail prices as well. So, And we talked about that too, about reservations, uh, the bowling guys uh, taking reservations and charging a reservation fee. That's that, right. That yeah. was counterintuitive, right? You're making it easier uh, for the facility to schedule um, events as they come in. And yet consumers today seem to be a-okay with uh, paying a premium to have that time secured. Correct. A hundred percent. I, I am, I am the kind of consumer today that I don't want to wait. And I, and I do candy and I talk about this all the time about consumers being more demanding. Um, you know, Gosh, we figured out how to get everything delivered straight to our homes. Yeah. And we want what we want when we want it. And so, yes, if a reservation has a, a fee associated with it, I'm a-okay. You can't get ball game tickets. You can't, you can't do anything. Right. Without some kind of a fee if you're going to guarantee your spot. Right. Well, Beth, I, I don't have anything else to, uh, uh, to uh, oppose to you. Um, you got any final words for, for, for uh, how to go about getting those group sales in the door? I think somebody has to own it. I think you have to have a human. And I think that it's just crazy to expect your general manager or an assistant manager or a 19-year-old party host to be in charge of what could be a half a million, a million dollar business in your facility. And so I, I really, really think somebody needs to champion groups. If you're unsure about how to do that, I know some people that can help you with it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I, I think it's time to get serious about yeah. it. We just, we, I often have talked about um, accidental business and business on purpose. And yeah. The accidental business is those of us that pick up the phone and we do a pretty good job with the people that call in. Is that all? Is that all you want? Because if it's not, you got to have somebody who will champion it and, and go out there and make that business happen. So yeah, it has to be intentional. Yeah. I'm, I'm really passionate about group sales for people who don't know me. I, I came right out of the industry and it's been a lot of years, but, but we literally had systems in place at FunFest in, in uh, Texas, in Farmers Branch, Texas, where we did 75 to 100 birthday parties a week and 40 to 70 company and group events a month. So we got really, we got really good at this and it's, it's substantial business and it can make such a big difference. In your, and people just know in your facilities there. We all know word of mouth is the very biggest bang for our marketing bucket. And the more people we could get in there with groups and with parties, the, the, I think the less we could spend on marketing <laughs> because people would be out there doing the word of mouth. Sorry yeah. to all my marketing friends. I just keep spending your marketing money. But I, I think group sales and party sales really, really build, build business quickly. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, Beth, I want to thank you again for joining us today. For those of you um, who have uh, are viewing this, for more information on group sales and really leadership training um, from a great organization. Trainertainment's a place to go. 
Uh, you've got Beth's contact information there. For those of you coming to the Amusement Expo, sign up for the education program. Beth's got a couple of sessions she's going to be participating in. Um, the one I talked about, hiring uh, people, which is so important right now and such a challenge today. And the other one being um, uh, the keynote, the closing keynote address with a panel of uh, CEOs from our industry talking about how their businesses have had to pivot and, 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 and survive and, dare I say, thrive uh, as a result of those pivots that they've had to make uh, pushed into by COVID-19. COVID-19 has created some good things. Um, and yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, it's not all bad. And yeah. the, yeah. I it, that, for heaven's sakes, that's, that's a good thing to come out of this. That's so right. that's right. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us again. You'll be able to watch this on the AAMA website, uh, coin op.org and look for the next webinar we got coming up, uh, uh, next month. Um, we'll, uh, dates and times, uh, will be coming out shortly via email blast. So thanks all of you for joining us and we'll see you next time. See you, Beth. Thank y'all.